everybody and welcome to another Top 5 Board Gaming video. Today I've got a follow-up to one that I did a couple of weeks ago where I talked about games about chemistry. Today we are going to move into games about biology. That's right, we're going to be talking about my own personal field of study and essentially the way that I designed this was not necessarily as the games that I enjoy more and more as we go up on the list, but more so that we are literally building up and up and up on this list. So it should be really fun. I'm really excited to talk about it. You guys know I love talking about science of all different sorts, but that said, please let me know anything and everything that you guys think in the comments below. What do you guys think of this category? What do you guys think of these sort of more intense learning and scientific type games in general? You guys know I love hearing about it. I love talking about it with you guys. But with that, we are going to go ahead and get started with my number five. At number five, we've got a game that is all about the first step of the central dogma of biology, which states that messenger RNA comes from DNA. The game itself is Linkage, the DNA card game. You can see it's a very, very tiny little game. In this, the idea is that everybody has a shared DNA sequence, and you have a card, a hand of cards that represent mRNA uh, bases. And the idea is that you're trying to play the bases that correspond to the DNA strand that you were given. So obviously this is a small game. It doesn't have a whole lot going on, but the fact is the science is accurate. The structures are generally accurate. There's a couple of minor errors with it, but in general, all told, it is a fun game. It is a good time and it's about biology. It's again, the first step of the central dogma of biology, in other words, how biology functions at a molecular level and that's what this game is all about. So you remember last time uh, or a couple weeks ago rather I did a video on chemistry and this is essentially what chemistry builds to. So we were building up molecules and one of those molecules happens to be DNA. Once we have DNA then we go and we make mRNA. So it's very fun. Again, very important stepping stone on the way to bigger and better things. Linkage is my number five. At number four, I've got the second step of the central dogma of biology, which states that messenger RNA is generated into protein, or translated, as it's called. The game is peptide. In this game, as I just implied, we are taking an mRNA sequence and translating it into a protein sequence, an amino acid sequence. And the way that it works is very, very simple. We've got what are called codons that represent specific amino acids, and we're playing down the cards that represent these different facets of the translation. So just like with Linkage and all of the chemistry games that I talked about a couple weeks ago, this this is a very technically scientifically accurate game and that's great that's what we love to see we do really love to see that kind of stuff the thing is that we are again as far as the ranking is concerned uh, for this particular video we're talking about a literal buildup from the small molecules all the way up to full-fledged organisms and that kind of thing uh, that said I personally prefer linkage over peptide peptide is more complex it's more strategically interesting and that kind of stuff but because of the increased uh, technicality with it, the uh, the technical aspects of the science, it tends to be a little bit more difficult for people to understand and really get into. But if you can find people who enjoy the science, then Peptide is definitely a great game to give a shot at. And overall, it is my number four. Three, I've got a game that I have talked about in many, many different contexts, but today I'm actually specifically going to be referring to one of its expansions. The game itself is Pandemic. The specific expansion is in the lab. 
It's not the most recent. I believe it's the second most recent one. So the most recent is the emergent state of emergency or something like that. And then before that was in the lab. With the in the lab expansion, the idea is that you are able to actually go into a laboratory setting, which is a separate board, and you are trying to sequence the genome, you're trying to sequence the DNA, and figure out what efficient ways you can use to fight off these specific diseases. Now, the thing about this is that it is very abstract. Okay, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to have that. But effectively, what we are doing with Pandemic in the lab is we are getting the sequences from games like Peptide and Linkage. We are seeing what those protein and DNA sequences are so that we can then better combat the uh, specific viruses or parasites or bacteria, whatever you want to say the diseases are. But again, because of the abstract nature in this game, it's not as interesting as it could be. However, there are not really a lot of games that show that aspect of biology actually going into the lab and doing a biological research. I mean, frankly, it's not really that exciting. Like, let's face it, even with games that I talked about a couple weeks ago with my chemistry video, it's I mean, you, you've got something that you can build off of. You've got something you can really do. Whereas with gene sequencing and looking at reactivity to drugs, there's not exactly a lot you can do. So for the abstract nature of it, it's necessary because you can have something that's really literal and very specific. Pandemic overall is a great game. I have sung its praises many, many times, and this is no different whatsoever. It's a really fun game overall. In the Lab is one of the better expansions, in my personal opinion. I really love it. Um, I like the fact that they got a lot of aspects of scientific research in there. Again, on a, an abstract sort of surface level, but still, it works, it's fun, and it's about biology. So, it is my number three. And number two, I've got a game that unfortunately I do not own. However, I have a very good reason for it. The game doesn't exist yet. So this is a game that I did a Kickstarter preview of quite a while ago, and it is arguably the most technically and scientifically accurate game I have ever played in my life. The game itself is Pathogenesis. It is a deck building game where you as a player are actively trying to at attack a human body. You are trying to attack the different tracks that a body has and uh, with your various parasites and viruses and things of that nature. Um, you're modifying your diseases with actual real world new proteins and toxins and you are uh, disabling bodily systems by giving like open wounds and things like that to better allow yourself to infect the body. As I said, it is tremendously scientifically accurate, by far the most scientifically accurate game I have ever played. But again, because of the nature of this video in particular, sort of building up from the bottom, this is really the next part where we're talking about how cells function and how different aspects interact with one another in a living body. And again, it is technically technically amazing, and if this uh, video were based off of simply the games that I enjoy the most, Pathogenesis would be on the top, because without a doubt, I really do enjoy it the most. However, similarly to Peptide, you can very easily run into the problem of ending up with a game that people just don't enjoy because they can't invest themselves in it. It's something that they are completely unfamiliar with. It's not inherently a bad thing, but the problem is it does happen, especially with games like this, because the fact is that there is a lot going on with pathogenesis, and it is extremely complex, and most of the time, especially when people are playing deck builders, they just want to read a card and say, does this help me win? Not really caring about the thematic aspect or what it means in an actual bodily system or whatever it happens to be. That said, pathogenesis is my number two game as we are climbing up the ladder.
At number one, I've got a game that talks to us about biology at the level of an entire ecosystem, an entire biome, entire planets. Now, relatively recently, this game just finished shipping out a new Kickstarter expansion that I thankfully got, and I'm very excited to try it out a little bit more. The game itself is Evolution. Now, Evolution, as its name implies, is all about the idea of biological evolution by natural selection. So what does that mean you're doing? It means that you are giving your animals new traits that allow them to survive better. It means that they don't need to eat as much. They're able to eat more, um, like for example with the carnivores, they're able to catch more prey. Or uh, the prey animals, the herbivores, are able to hide better from the carnivores. You're able to better stay in packs so that you don't have to worry as much about your population dwindling and all this kind of stuff. You've got, excuse me, You've got a surprising amount of depth in this game with regard to the scientific accuracy. Similarly to Pandemic, a lot of it is relatively abstract, but it's really not a bad thing in this case. The fact is that evolution by natural selection is an extremely complex endeavor to learn and read and know about. And the way that evolution goes about doing it with having the traits on the cards and things like that is an excellent way to go about it and to use it as a teaching and a learning tool. Although again, with the nature of this video, we're talking about games that are sort of building up from the bottom. So obviously you're not going to be talking about directly mutating gene sequences to create those happenstance changes that allow these new traits to manifest and the uh, whatever the new generation is to survive more efe efficiently. You don't see that. That's not the nature of this game. That's not what it's designed for. You simply play it on a card and you add a trait. That said, there are two expansions right now. You've got Flight, which does exactly what it sounds like. It adds various flying mechanics. You can add wings to animals so that you can have even more versatility in terms of how you're collecting and getting food and how you're getting away from predators. And the other expansion that just recently came out that I received is Evolution Climate. Now, in climate, it does, again, exactly what it sounds like. We're talking about climate change. Whoa! It's getting hot, it's getting cold, and that's going to affect how well your animals survive. It's going to kill off certain food sources. It's also going to make certain adaptations much more easily obtainable and things like that. Now, that said, there were two games I was really debating for this number one spot because they're very similar to Evolution. The first one is Evo, which is virtually identical in every way to evolution in terms of you are adding traits to your animals you are able to uh, you've got a climate aspect you've got the combat aspect and all that kind of stuff the reason I love evolution over it is because I like the way that the traits function in evolution over the way that they function in Evo now in Evo it's not bad necessarily but it's relatively abstract in the way that you're doing it whereas in this it is directly saying I have this card that gives me this trait and it does and it's an actual trait that you see in nature type of thing whereas in Evo it's more abstract in terms of I have a lot I have more fur so I'm able to survive in colder climates better I have a horn so I'm able to beat you in combat more efficiently stuff like that well technically you can make an argument that it's true it's not as sort of cut and dried with uh, relation to nature the other major game I was looking at for this number one spot is dominant species which is arguably the most similar game to Evolution because you have that very, very deep strategic aspect to the game. And I believe it's on my shelf up there now. Yeah. It's right above Battlestar Galactica. I don't know if you can see it. Um, however, with Dominant Species, it's much more strategically... Um, I guess strategically intense compared to evolution and that's why I opted for evolution instead. Not only is evolution easier to get uh, just in terms of being able to purchase it but it's less expensive uh, but dominant species is so much more complex it's a lot more difficult for people to wrap their heads around. Much more heavily strategic game but at the same time it does have more specific aspects of natural selection than even evolution does. So in dominant species you have differences between like the amphibians versus the reptiles versus the insects versus the mammals and stuff like that so you get very distinct play styles whereas in evolution 
your creature, your animal, is sort of arbitrary in terms of exactly what it is. It's not a bad thing, it just means that your traits are solely determined by the cards. But either way, we are talking about biome level, environmental level, earth-wide global level biology right here in Evolution the Board Game, particularly with the expansions, an absolutely great way to learn about natural selection, how it works, what is going on at the level of an individual species, and overall my number one game about biology. So that's it for me, folks. I hope that you enjoyed this video on my top five favorite games about biology. Again, this is my own personal field. This is what I do for a living. I love it. I'm so excited to always talk about it. But as always, more importantly, I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. What do you think of the category in general? What do you think of scientific board games? Do you want me to look at other scientific fields? Because the fact is there are a lot of others, and you guys know that scientifically themed games are my favorite favorite by far. Uh, but with that, thank you so very much again for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Again, let me know any and all thoughts in the comments below, including games that you enjoy of this, what you think of this video, all of that kind of stuff. But with that, thank you very much, and I will see you next time.